to and from pi to pi over 3. That's pi to pi over 3, which says that if you want to, you can interchange them, but it's going to make your integral negative. Uh, I can guarantee you this integral is going to end with, well, I can guarantee you, this integral is going to end with a negative area. That's what it's going to do. So, and that's because of that, that relationship right there. So, well, the reason why I said be careful is because if you go, oh, yeah, integrals always go from pi over 3 to pi, then you're going to miss that negative. You had to write that write like that first because the 3 maps to pi over 3. The 1 maps to pi. That's what those bounds were. You can't write them backwards just because you want to. Okay, that didn't work. Uh, we got to really be careful on that. And if you're going to switch them around, then you're going to have that negative up front. Okay, now for the, the other good stuff. Uh, we have, uh, what else is up here? Come on now. Cosine still there? Yeah. If it's not part of your U, it's still there. Cosine of what? U. X squared is still there for right now. DX is definitely not there. Instead of DX, you're going to write what DX equals to. That's negative X squared over pi DU. I do like that for you. <coughs> now, some interesting, interesting things are going to happen. Interesting things are going to happen. Some things are going to cross out. Some signs are going to be pulled out. Some constants are going to be pulled out. Let's see everything that happens here. Tell me one thing that happens. Yeah, x words are great. If that didn't happen, you'd either have to manipulate that somehow like we did before, which would be kind of the PETA, the pain in the rear end. Okay, you want to do that. Uh, or that's about it. You can do it. So cross out your x squareds. That's great. What else can I move out in front of my integral? You're negative. Now you have negative 1 over pi. Yes. Times you already have a negative if you reverse it. Negative 1. I'm not doing that yet. Okay. Let's see if we can all make it down there in our heads. Are you feeling good with that so far? So just doing our substitution, we simplified some algebraic things up here, moved out our constants, which is great. Now, this is in the wrong order, but right here, that's going to look like it helps us a little bit. If I reverse them, notice I can change the sign, right? Put them in the correct order, I'm going to change the sign. So what this says is, let's go ahead and let's, let's flip these bounds. When I flip the bounds, I'm going to get negative, negative 1 over pi, my integral will change from pi over three, uh, pi to pi over three, back to pi over three to pi. Cosine u dU. Okay, I made that negative way too big. There we go. But you see the negative, negative, right? Mm -hmm. Technically, what I really should have is a big bracket around here. If you want to draw that, you can. But that negative negative is going to change. That's going to become a positive. So we get our 1 over pi. From pi over 3 to pi of cosine u du. By the way, it's really nice that we changed bounds here, because otherwise we'd have to substitute back in for that. And it's a little bit more confusing. You have to figure out a couple things as you're going. It's nice that that's already done for us. What I'd like you to do right now, would you go ahead and do the integral? Go ahead and evaluate it the way that we've written it, the way that it's kind of nice for us, and then see what you have. Don't forget about that 1 over pi out in front. Remember, it's positive now because the negative negative gave us that positive. Oh, yeah, by the way, the integral of cosine, sine or negative sine? Sine. Sine. Okay. That would change your problem, right? Remember that the derivative of sine is positive cosine, so the integral of positive cosine is positive sine. No plugging in back for x's. We already changed our bounds. That's great. So we don't have to do this whole 
resubstitution thing. We don't have to do that. We've changed our bounds off the side. We were already in terms of u. That just means from right here, let's evaluate it. So we'll do 1 over pi. That's going to be out front. Inside we'll have sine pi minus sine pi over 3. stone for a second, I don't know why. What? Oh yeah, I had it in my head as something different. <laughs> Sine of pi over 3, how much is that? Square root of 3 over 2. Good. <clears throat> Were you able to get that as well? Cool. 0 minus root 3 over 2? Negative root 3 over 2. Interesting. 1 over pi. negative root 3 over 2, put it all together, you're going to get negative root 3 over 2 pi. That's your area. Looking at your area, would you say that this curve is above or below the x-axis for most of this region? For most of this region. If it crosses, I don't know whether it does or not, uh, but if it crosses, most of it is below the x-axis because our area is mostly below the x-axis. So area speaking, it's mostly below the x-axis. How many people feel okay with our example? Okay, that's the, one, the last one you get about direct substitution with their different angles and changing bounds. I'm going to show you some kind of tricks, some not, not tricks, properties of things you can use to, to make uh, even and odd functions work for you sometimes. Are you sure there's no more questions on this stuff? Do you feel pretty comfortable with it? Yeah. Substitution, no problem. You are doing really that. Now it's just changing balance and being able to evaluate. It. I've given you some kind of nice examples that kind of illustrate that a little bit better for you. But let's talk about even and odd functions and how we can use them to our benefit sometimes. Even and odd functions and integrals. Let's talk about even functions for a second. Hey, tell me something. What do you know about an even function? Oh, so say that again. Symmetric. Symmetric, yes. About about what? Which x axis? No. Y axis. Well, yeah, it's the other one. Very good. That's what Jamie says. Okay, we're not in count three. Okay, yeah, it's symmetric about the y-axis. Uh, dear goodness me. Yeah, that's what even means. Uh, x squared is an even function. x fourth, even function. x squared minus two, even function. They're symmetric about the y-axis. That's one thing we know about even functions. Here's the definition of it, actually. Uh, even function says... That's what an even function says. I hope it makes sense to, on why that would work. It says you plug in a number or the negative version of that number and your height is the same. What that's going to do is make it symmetric about the y-axis. Notice that? Plug in 2, you get out 7. Whatever. Plug in negative 2, you get out 7. That means it's symmetric. It's going to go up at the same rate on either side of the, of the y-axis and that's what this is doing. So it's this, and what it means is symmetric about the y-axis.
And just make sure you know it's the Y. Well, let's think about this for a second then. Let's suppose that if F is even, And I'm going from negative A to positive A. Go from negative A to positive A, taking the integral of f of x dx. If f of x is, let, let's go through the logic, okay? If f of x is even, what do you know about f of x? Symmetric. So that means that when I plug in negative A and I plug in A, I get the same output. At any point between them, plug in the negative and the opposite of that, I'm going to get the same output, right? Would you agree then that the area from negative A to zero would be the same as zero to A? Yes. If it's symmetric about the Y, it better, it better be. Because you're going to get a picture like this. I don't know what F of X is going to look like, but I know it's going to be something like this. Whatever this does, this is going to do the same thing on the other side. It's supposed to look the same, by the way. I'm not that good of an artist. My paper looks better. I should show you my paper. They're laughing at you. They're laughing at my picture. <laughs> Hopefully you can't hear them in the video. They're laughing at me. <laughs> Well, if it's even, you're going to get that relationship. If you're going from negative A to A, that's actually a special case, right? It can't be going from like negative B to positive A, because those numbers wouldn't match up. That would be different. But if it's going from negative to positive of the same number, well, then you know, this area has to equal this area, which means that this integral is going to equal that integral. Does that make sense? Sometimes it's easier to calculate from 0 to a number than it is from negative to a number. It's easier to do that. So if we can do that, well, then no problem. If it's an even function, shoot, we can do this. We can calculate 2 times that integral. We're good to go. 0 is always easier. Though. 0 is normally very much easier. Yeah. Now, if you have to use a substitution, the 0 might change. But normally, zero is easier. Let me just show you with an example that this does actually work. The only thing you got to do, which kind of stinks, is that you have to prove it's even before you can do it. Right? You can't just say, ah, I think it's even, let's try it. No, that doesn't really work all the time. So you got to show that it's even. So for instance, Let's talk about that one. Now, that's a pretty basic integral. Uh, you could clearly do this integral just the way it is. You could just do it, and that would be just fine. I'm not going to give you a super tough one where, where it's super, super nice to do that. I'm just going to show you with one that's easy for us to see that it is possible. Uh, first thing you do, though, you got to prove it's even. Here's how you prove it's even. You start out with f of negative x, and you have to show that that's equal to f of x. So f of negative x says this. You go to your function f of x, and you just replace x with negative x. So for us, that would be negative x squared plus 4. 